This hyperdrive blows are gonna be pieces of us in three different systems. What'd you do? I bypassed the compressor. Greetings, my friends. John, the basic expert here, and we're here with another West End Games Star Wars D6 uh, video. And in this video, we're going to kind of try and cover everything that has to do with starships within the game. I want to say that I think what is really awesome about this game in particular is just the unification and simplicity of the rules. Um, the, the design ability of, of a lot of this stuff really shines, I think, in just how simple Starship combat is. You know, I went over Traveler, for instance, recently, which it's almost like two different diametrically opposed approaches to Starship combat. In that classic Traveler uses vectors, and you're trying to be very precise, and there's an order to everything, and... West End game Star Wars D6 is much more cinematic in nature. Um, distances are more a little, little more loosey goosey, and therefore it it's not as I don't want to say it's not as serious, but it's just a different approach. I find West End game Star Wars D6 to be a lot easier to use in regards to keeping track of things on a general level than I do with. Um, Traveler, though I absolutely love Traveler and will always love Traveler and continue to run Traveler. But the unification here, I, I think this is just something that just shows, I think, um, the the design capability of all those involved in this game. And I mean, it makes sense because a lot of the guys that designed this game went on to work at Bethesda, for instance, and worked on the Elder Scrolls games. I think one of them, I don't remember which one, worked on Oblivion, for example, as a writer and quest designer and whatnot. So, farewell. May you rest in peace. You know. There is a lot of, uh, you can see the beginnings of that here in, in these sections and in, in just how this game is written and plays, right? So let's talk about the specific things you need to know about each starship and like the, the, the statistics, the, the, um, attributes, I guess you could say of, of the starship. So crew, that's the number of crew, uh, crew members needed to operate the ship safely. Um, obviously, any less, there could be some issues involved in safely operating the ships. Passengers, obviously, that's self-explanatory. The number of passengers beyond the crew that you can take on on that ship. Cargo capacity, this is measured in kilograms. Consumables, uh, that's how many days the ship can operate before landing or docking. A measure of the amount of food, water, air, and fuel carried. So it's kind of just this catch-all sort of uh of metric there for ships which i like you know again keep things simple in my opinion hyperdrive multiplier this affects how long it takes to travel from one star to another uh nav computer this uh ships without nav computers have problems traveling by hyperspace so we're going to talk about this because when you watch the the star wars films you don't necessarily get a sense of exactly how hyperspace works what exactly it is and um kind of what well, I, I think we can credit West End Game Star Wars D6, both this core rule book and the the blue source book, for sort of expounding on and giving, I think, very reasonable explanations. You know, Star uh Star Wars is often viewed as this uh sci-fi fantasy sort of thing. It's it's more space fantasy, space opera. But I really feel like these books give you some hard and fast rules for why things are the way they are and how they work. And I much prefer that to say, it, I, I said that before, like the simplicity, but you do need to have these things in place for your, for playing a game. And, um, you know, it, it, it takes time to travel in hyperspace, even in the star Wars universe. I know in the films, it makes it seem like it, it doesn't, but it does. It makes me think like, Oh man, Luke is in that X wing for like a week. What's he doing? How does he go to the bathroom? But, you know, 
<laughs> well, that, that's a topic you can you can choose to cover that at your table if you wish or not. It doesn't matter. So you need a nav computer to navigate hyperspace, and we'll we'll get into that eventually because you could plow through a planet, you could specks of dust could affect your ship. And I, I just like that. It makes Star Wars feel um less fantasy, I guess, in some respects. There's some insertion here of of hard sci-fi concepts and rules that I think Star Wars does need. So I, I appreciate that. Hyperdrive backups is another metric you need to be aware of. Uh, larger ships carry these for use in emergency. So if the main hyperdrive goes out, do you have these backup, uh, you know, do you have backup hyperdrive um, equipment in place to get your ship to escape from pirates or the Empire, whatever it is that you're doing? Uh, sublight speed. This die code is used in ship to ship combat. Maneuverability. Uh, this is to um, pull. And this die code is used when the ship is hit in ship to ship combat to determine the level of damage it takes. So it functions pretty much like your strength score when you're hit. Uh, you're going to roll, do an opposed roll to the damage. And uh, the, the, the difference is there. You're going to have different levels of, of damage that your ship can take, uh, much like um, regular, like on the ground shooting blasters at each other combat. Uh, you have the hull. This die code is used when ships, uh, or sorry, weapons. This the, a description of what what the weapons are that are carried, how much damage they do. Useful for when you're doing the opposed roll against the hull of your, whatever you're shooting at. And shields. Uh, if a ship has shields, it has a shield rating, which protects it when the ship is hit. In the same way that armor protects characters in character combat. So a shield rating will, like armor, you you add it to your strength roll. Your shield rating is going to be added to the uh, the, the whole uh, code to see if it if any damage is absorbed or anything like that. So that those are the main things you need to be aware of as far as uh, ship combat is concerned. Beyond a lot of that, you have a lot of rules for, for instance, booking passage within this book. I'm not going to go over within this book here. I'm not going to go over that specifically. Um, it just says, you know, Regular civilians need to get around in the galaxy, and it gives you costs and, and all that kind of stuff. Getting a ship, uh, how, how do you get a ship? It gives you rules for, uh, essentially, it's a very much like travel, whereas if you get a ship, you are going to have the debt that goes along with that ship, which I think is important. And it kind of gives you that Han Solo feeling, too, of like, I owe people a lot of money, which I think is important to the uh, aesthetic and feel of, of a Star Wars game. You have rules for trips. Um, trips could take weeks, months, um, days, weeks, or months. It doesn't. It depends on the on the the speed of your ship and the distance that you're traveling. Um, there's rules for pirates and privateers. Uh, I would recommend you looking at that. The Empire does not suffer pirates. Uh, they destroy them on sight, but that does not stop pirates from from attacking you as players. Alternatively, this could be a uh, privateering, for instance, where the rebellion would hire pirates to attack imperial liners and, and ships of that sort. So you could run a campaign where the players are privateers in the employ of the rebellion, which I think could really be a fun game. You're going to get lots of starship combat, boarding, uh, robbing, lots of different things like that. Could be a lot of fun. Things go sideways. You're on the run. You, I mean, instant story right here. This is what I love about this game. And I think, you know, despite how Star Wars has been perceived as of late and how kind of lackluster most uh, Disney Star Wars has been, uh, you know, at your table, you are given the tools here to tell stories that are often much better than what anything Disney or anyone at Disney could tell uh, through rolling dice and having a good time with your friends. Right, let's let's uh, talk a little bit about hyperdrives because I think this is kind of fun stuff. And again, it kind of gives some hard sci-fi rules to the Star Wars universe, and I think that that's neat. I think that that's cool. So the the book specifies that hyperdrive technology is sort of viewed as a miracle. Most average people don't really understand how it works, but essentially, what it to me reading it, what what's in within the Star Wars universe. When you're going into hyperspace, this is sort of like a parallel dimension of sorts that you're using to take a shortcut through space. And um, many aspects of hyperspace remain a mystery even to imperial science, as the book specifies. Uh, what it, what in a technical aspect of it, though, is that 
each point in real space is associated with a point in hyperspace. And real objects have a sort of hyperspace shadow, as the book calls them. That if there is like a, a planet, there is going to be a, a hyperspace shadow of that planet in hyperspace. Hence, you need nav computers in order to navigate through this. So sometimes in the book specifies that asteroids, for instance, can move. And you can use this as a game master, as a referee to sort of slow players down. If uh, you could use them as random encounters, for instance, causing damage to their ship or forcing them to stop and sort of replot their course or land on a planet or a station somewhere to refuel because stuff just got messed up, right? Repair their ship. Um, and then what, whatever it is, uh, you, you can use these sorts of things like that. Uh, you, so this, this is what could cause, for instance, a two week long trip through hyperspace to take a month, let's say, which could be a problem, uh, you know, as far as fuel and consumables are concerned with the ship. And so if, if a ship, for instance, goes through the shadow of, of a planet, this could destroy the ship or severely damage it even like i said dust and asteroids these sorts of things are important this is why there's roots and you're given rules for different kinds of roots so players can attempt to plot their own roots if they wish or they can uh use pre-designed roots or or if there's roots that are going to have lots of traffic already on them these are known roots the problem there is that for instance you could run into the empire you could run into uh to pirates or, or any other sort of malevolent sort of uh, entities that would operate in these areas. So these are things that players have to play with. So for instance, it essentially within the Star Wars universe, they, they space travel is dangerous, which I like. Um, I, I like that aspect. It's not something that's really seen in the films. They sort of just fast travel to wherever they want to go. But I think within a Star Wars game that this is something that's, that's needed, that's important. All right, so when players want to make a jump to, we should talk about that. So you need to have someone with the astrogation skill who's going to, and there's an astrogation gazetteer uh, within this book itself. Uh, essentially, there's a standard duration for chips, and your hyperdrive multiplier is going to affect the amount of time. So let's say the book gives an example of, of seven days for a trip. And if the hyperdrive multiplier is two for a very slow ship, it's going to take 14 days. Generally, most ships are one. So seven times one is seven. So it takes seven days. Some are half. So it would be three and a half days uh, for a particularly fast ship to, to make the jump. You can modify durations as well. As I said, have rogue planets come out in hyperspace, asteroid fields, all kinds of stuff that could cause problems for your players and their crew or whatever it is that they're doing and how they're traveling, which will um, happen. So astrogation without a nav computer is also an important thing we should talk about. When a ship without any nav computer, a rebel X-wing, or a ship with a damaged computer travels by hyperspace, the difficulty number for a standard duration trip is 30 instead of 15. It becomes incredibly difficult, which could cause some mishaps such as hyperdrive cutout, um, hyper, uh, let's see, uh, Radiation fluctuations off course. Uh, Minox is one. Remember that from Empire Strikes Back. Watch out! It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, what I thought. Minox. Uh, lots of different things. Collisions with heavy damage sustained, uh, all the way to light damage and whatnot. So these are all things that that uh players may encounter one thing i dislike is this is game mastering tips making rules serve the plot and i don't particularly like these rules and how they're specified though i understand that this star wars d6 is slightly more of a narrative based game and so i guess it, i'm going in with my like sandbox uh o osr mindset and i so I guess this is acceptable. So it's just something for me to wrap my head around stylistically with this kind of game as opposed to like a dungeon crawl or sandbox fantasy game, which is what I generally run. So, for instance, it starts out in this section saying, how long does it take to get from planet uh, A to star system B? The correct answer is as long as you want it to take. And so I get the GM fiat thing, but I think, and, and the book does a good job of specifying this, that be fair, um, 
do not be uh, uh, an aggressive or 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 confrontational game master with your players i guess you know it has to it, it specifies it's serving the plot not you not your desires necessarily so and it, it gives an example for instance you know you could have like the, the players think that this seven day trip is going to take seven days with their hyperspace modifier of 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 one and you throw a rogue planet in there because you want it to take longer. You need it to take longer for whatever reason. The book says throw a rogue planet in there or, cause for, or, or an asteroid belt or some sort of malfunction that will force them to take longer, let's say. And okay, whatever. We'll, we'll move on from that. So let's, let's talk about uh, combat here. Um, it, it specifies that this kind of combat system that is present in the book is better for like two to three maybe four ships uh it is not designed for like fleets of warships battling each other so this is more for like your smugglers being attacked by like one or two tie fighters or being chased by a, a single destroyer or frigate or something like that from the from the empire it is not designed to uh for instance replay uh the battle of yavin or um the the battle uh for the second the battle of endor for the, against the second death star you're not going to be able to run unless you really zero in on a specific segment of that battle you're not going to be able to use these rules for that they do because western games as i said in the very first video used to be a war games company they do have rules set for uh for larger combat called star warriors which um i don't have i've been looking to get my hands on it but it it's a game that can be played on its own it's it's war it's it's starship war game and you could use that instead if you're looking to do a large battle and then you could probably again in conjunction with it kind of like od and d and chainmail you know when the, if the pcs are involved in a particular battle you zoom in on that and use the rules in this book to see how it plays out and then you could zoom back out and have the mass combat going on zoom back in when necessary that's personally how i would probably do it you might not even need it though if you're if you're running a game where uh there's smugglers or let's say privateers and there's not going to be necessarily constant large-scale warfare you should probably be okay without star warriors but star wars is something i should look into and definitely take a peek at probably talk about in the series at some point maybe at the end in a in appendix sort of video an appendices sort of video like i did with uh, basic fantasy so just know that that exists and that that is out there so let's talk about combat sequences within starship combat it's relatively simple it's very similar to regular uh combat in in either land vehicles or in person to person combat that generally you're probably going to be encountering in most of your games so there's a piloting segment. Pilots, co-pilots, and gunners announce what actions they take this combat round. So do any other characters on the ship. You have a speed segment. Dice are rolled for each ship to determine whether it closes with its opponent or increases distance. And this is going to depend if you're trying to run away. For instance, your ship's trying to run away and you're being hounded by some TIE fighters. You would roll the speed dice to determine if that distance is increased or, or decreased. Again, this is all very theater of the mind. There's no necessary, you could use miniatures if you wanted to, but it's, it's purely just like, it gives you essentially range bands. And is that range band increasing or decreasing? You have the fire seg uh, first fire segment. So gunners uh, make skill, skill rolls to determine whether they hit their targets. Pilots roll to evade enemy fire. Shield operators roll to intercept enemy fire with their shields. Uh, when weapons hit targets, damage rolls are, are made and compared to hull and shield rolls. So, very simple. And then you just have any subsequent fire segments. Again, uh, you can fire more than once in West End Games Star Wars D6. It's just you're going to remove a, a die for every extra shot or action that you take, just like in regular combat. So, very simple. Um, I think if you know, I think that's, again, the beauty of the system. If you know how to run the other systems, you kind of read this and you're like, oh, makes perfect sense. Um, this... I, I get how to play this. It's it's essentially the same subsystem under the hood as uh, character versus character combat. You're just 
have a ship now. And what's cool is that you can have different people in different roles, like the the shield engineer, the the co-pilot. The co-pilot can help with evasions and whatnot, which could help with, um, for instance, if uh, with the removal of dice, you could, for instance, have like the co-pilot maneuver uh, instead of the the pilot if the pilot has taken too many actions and he's like i'm out of actions like you do it you know very uh very similar very useful in in that something you can't do in in person to person combat um so again damage is very similar to um to person on person combat there is the the whole roll greater than the damage roll. You're lightly damaged, shields down, or controls are ionized. So you still have a penalty if you're hit. Damage roll greater than or equal to whole roll, but less than two times the whole roll. Uh, you are heavily damaged. Uh, damage roll at least two times the, the whole roll, but less than three times the whole roll. Severely damaged. Damage at least three times the whole roll destroyed. The ship is completely destroyed, which means everyone dies. Potentially, you could you could roll if the ship has uh, escape pods. Like do the you could do some rolls to determine whether the players make it to there or not and survive. But generally, people are probably uh, not escaping with their lives in most uh, in most situations. So there's rules for improving ships. There's um, all kinds of stuff. It's it's all very very simple. Um, I think, and I was going to do an example for that, but you know, we already essentially like just go back and watch, uh, my example playthrough through the example rules where combat is done and you can see how the dice rolls are used. It's pretty much the same thing. It's, it's the exact same situation. Uh, I really love, I really love this game. Um, I'm looking forward to running this really soon, either in my in-person group or maybe with some friends online. We'll see. But it's it's an elegant, simple system. I'm really glad that I'm shining a light on this. I know people know about this game. It's Star Wars. It's, it's a big deal. But I don't know. I think Saga gets maybe a little too much credit. Uh, people people pay attention to that much. Even the second edition of this game, I think, where the game really expanded, uh, maybe gets a little too much attention because there's just some elegant simplicity, I think, in the first edition books that is just lost in, in later editions. I know people love their wild die. People were commenting on my videos, like, I noticed you weren't using the wild die. And no, it's because this that didn't exist in this yet. That was a second edition thing. So I highly suggest you check this out. If you're able to get the PDFs, they're free on uh, a website. Just You could just Google this book and that website will come up and you can download every product that existed for this, this game. Uh, if you can get your hands on physical copies, I got mine very reasonably priced. This one was, I think, forty, and this one was thirty dollars, or it, maybe this one was fifty, and this one was thirty dollars. So, about the price of a Wizards of the Coast book, but much better quality. Um, these these are as old; these books are as old as I am. So that tells you something right there of the quality of of these older books. And Fantasy Flight Games had done a 30th anniversary edition of these books as well. And uh, people in my comments have said they've been able to get their hands on those reprints as well. So I highly suggest you check out this game. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please either support here on YouTube, like, subscribe. You can uh, join the Gilded server where we have lots of fun conversations. We run games from there and uh, have a good time talking about OSR games, games like this. Um, and you can support the channel on there as well. And, uh, you can support on subscribe star as well. Supporters at the dollar tier on any platform, get a dungeon map a week. Uh, there should be one on subscribe star and for gilded supporters already. The, uh, supporters at $3 or more get an adventure a month or a supplement. I have some cool ideas. I'm essentially, I think going to be doing a zine going forward i'll just announce it now in january i want to make it more like a zine rather than um just a, a module i want to make it a little more interesting a little more big and so some of those those uh zines will have like my opinions on the hobby uh examples of of, of how i run games advice uh mon new monsters adventures as usual um the first one is going to be like a murder mystery adventure for your osr games and um just just i want to make it more like a really tight little like 10 page zine 12 page zine something like that you get that for three dollars 
And at five dollars or more, whenever I release, just my hearty thank you for that. Um, you also get the PDF version of whatever it is I release for free at that tier as well. So, and and again, I I highly thank everyone that supports this channel and what I'm doing. It means a whole lot to me. Uh, the more of you that support, the more time I'm able to devote to this kind of stuff. And I love talking about this kind of stuff. And so. It just means a whole lot to me that people believe in what I'm doing and um, like what I'm doing and like me talking about this kind of stuff and giving my opinion. Some some young guy like me, you know, as I said, I'm too young to have played this game when it came out. These books are as old as I am. So uh, 35 years old. So uh, as of recording this video. So it means a lot that people from all different uh, eras of this hobby like what i do it means a whole lot to me so thank you to those that support the channel and if you're considering thank you if you like and subscribe thank you if you share my stuff thank you it means so much to me i'll catch you guys on monday i think we're going to be possibly discussing artificial intelligence and art ai art ai generated art and pros cons is it a threat i'm an artist myself so i'm going to give my perspective on that and uh that should be a good good conversation if that is the topic we're talking about so Tune in Monday, 8.15 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And with that, well, talk to you guys later. Peace out.